He's the Ghana mission team leader. Uh, he's been serving on the Ghana mission leadership team for five years and has been to Africa about a dozen times. If you see him here at Eastern Hills and he's not pushing a snow shovel or warming the barbecue, he is probably praying for, talking about, or planning to visit his friends in Ghana. Ken works for the IT group at AXA Equitable when he's not here at Eastern Hills. Would you welcome Ken Kaiser? Good morning. Uh, just as a, I was with Dave on that trip to Sudan, and uh, I have never, um, that was like the experience of a lifetime. And if I have a chance to catch up with you, I have a cup of coffee to tell you about what that was. It was just truly amazing. <clears throat> I am here to, uh, to share some of my experiences um, as we've tried to engage and invite and include our neighbors, friends, and coworkers in this. It, it, it really is what we're trying to do today, right? And so uh, a little bit about how we've engaged the folks here to help us partner help us with our partners engage their communities there, right? So uh, hopefully my crazy experiences, right, I'm going to ramble on for about 10 minutes here about the things I have done and seen in the five years of running back and forth across the ocean. Uh, hopefully some of this will just uh, maybe come up with an idea of how you might engage the folks around you for the things that you're doing, whatever that might be. So... So, uh, as Brian had said, our first trip to Africa was about five years ago, and uh, it was kind of funny. Uh, we had decided to go. My wife had decided to go, and then I said, well, I'll go with you. And so, we were getting ready to go, and apparently, the third grade here in FM teaches Ghana, which is where we were going. And so, the teacher sent a note home and said, that's really weird. You know, I was talking about Ghana, and your son said you're going to Ghana. That can't be true. And we said, well, in fact, we are. And she said, hey, when you come back, would you share with us? Would you tell us, like, what you've seen? Do you have pictures? You know, and we said, sure. And so, you know, we went and came back and had a great time. You know, I've been back 11 more times, so it couldn't have been too bad. We, uh, we went, we came back, and we went to the class, and we showed our pictures, and we showed our fabric and our beads and you know, the kids all beat on the one drum we came home with, and it was such a good time. Apparently, we went across the hall and did the same thing for the teacher next door, and next week, we came in and did the other third grade classes in that school, and we thought, well, that was cool, and then the other school in the district called and said, hey, would you do it for us, and we spent the next week over there presenting to their third grade classes, and Gosh, it was like a month later, the, the last elementary school in the district said, hey, hey, everybody else got that. When are you coming to us? And uh, we said, well, I guess we'll come over. And so that started. And it was kind of weird because we had started to engage, and we didn't even know what it was. We were just excited about what we were doing. And uh, so that went forward. And the next year, we, they said, hey, new third grade class. They haven't heard your story. You should come. And we said, well, okay. So... I said, you know, hey, why don't you guys come with us? I mean, why don't you get involved, you know, get to do this? And it was funny because they started to really get involved. I mean, from that, we had an Africa night at one of the schools where they raised money and books for us to bring on the trip. Uh, they had, like, a fundraiser. If the kids paid a dollar, they could wear a funny hat. Or It was crazy. They raised $900 for a well in Africa because... We went one day and showed our beads. It was bizarre. Um, so, I, I mean, it was just an amazing experience just because we were being available. Uh, I coach a lot of soccer, and so the second time I went uh, to Africa, to the kids that I was coaching here in FM, I said, hey, I'm going to visit a lot of impoverished kids, a lot of kids who don't even have a second shirt. Would you buy a soccer ball for them? Just from, from you to him or her, would you buy a ball? It was incredible. I mean, everybody was willing to give up 10, 15 bucks. Like, and I thought, well, that's cool. But the next trip, I said, hey, I'm going to Africa. People were like, 
Well, when are you collecting soccer balls? And, and the club that we play with, they, they want to donate the soccer balls that they have because we rotate them every two years. We have to have new balls here in FM. Old balls are not good enough. Would you take the old balls with you? We'll pack them for you. It's like, holy, okay. You know, and so we've donated hundreds of soccer balls to Africa. I, we literally max out the space we have to go. It's incredible. And so we're having these conversations, right? And it's chasing me around town. I can't get away from it. And friends of ours own a coffee shop. And we're sitting in the coffee shop. And somebody says, hey, you didn't stop by to pick up the stuff to go. And the woman who's a, a neighbor of ours and owns a coffee shop, she's like, what are they talking about? And I said, oh, you know, it's the whole Africa thing. She goes, well, I want to help. Okay. Like, I don't know, four, five, six hundred dollars later from a tip cup sitting at the coffee shop, we have bed nets for an entire village, a village much like Dave was talking about. Pleheve is one of the villages we serve, right? We, we're sharing that experience. Wow, it's pretty crazy. Someone goes out, like for 200 families now have bed nets because she just wanted to help out. She wanted to help a friend help a friend. That's crazy. So, uh, those were the kind of ways, like, and, and then we started to shape this idea that that's what our mission statement's going to be for the Ghana missions team, right? We are going to engage our community here as we partner with our friends there to engage their communities. That's really what our mission statement is. And it was like, well, it seems to work. I don't know. We'll, we'll run with it, but so as we made that our mission statement, we now felt like we were beholden to it, like we were accountable to it, and we're going to do it. And it's funny because God was with it all along, right? So we no sooner say this, we go through a great mission, vision, values process with Perry Harvey, who helped us like really define who we were and what we're doing. We no sooner get that done, and we get an email from a local family, and it says, hey, you know, we go to a really small church, but we really feel like our child should be involved in a trip. And our church is too small. We don't do anything like that. Would you consider bringing our daughter? And I said, well, I don't know. I'll meet you at Panera. I mean, I, you know, I got to have a look. I don't know. We'll see. And so we met at Panera, and we had coffee, and it was great. And my wife and Kathy Schreiber, and it was just a delightful experience. We said, sure, we'll take her. Great kid. I can't tell you much about her experience, it really, there was a bunch of teenage girls on the trip. I know the girl squealed every time she saw a goat, but, I mean, it was really uneventful. There was no emotional breakdown. There was no, I mean, just a delight to have on the trip. I got back to the airport. I handed her back to her parents. We shook hands, gave a hug, and I walked away. Beginning of the summer. Fast forward to the end of the summer. It's Labor Day, and I'm in Wegmans, and I get in line behind, ironically, a friend of mine from the soccer club. And he, he says, hey, how was the trip? And I said, oh, what trip? Where'd I go? Because I, I tend to go a lot. And he says, you know, you went to Africa a couple? Of, oh, yeah, yeah. He says, uh, hey, how was that girl? And I said, uh, great, why? I mean, she's got this crazy thing for goats. But other than that, she's good. And he goes, uh, you know, I don't think I ever told you, but you were vetted on that. Her dad is my college roommate, and we've been good friends, and I mean, that totally wowed her. I mean, it, it changed her life. And I was like, really? And he goes, oh, yeah, you know, the whole college search thing, it was changed around. She's now only looking at Christian and Jesuit schools. Did you know that? I said, no, I haven't seen or heard her since. He goes, totally rocked her world, changed her, and I, I mean, wow. I was like, huh. And so it's like, wow, I guess God is with us on this. And, and you know, just one other quick story, and then uh, I've probably babbled enough. So we started this process. The first time I went to Ghana, I took vacation to go at work. And they kind of looked at me like, Ghana, where's Ghana? And I said, uh, you know, whatever. Second trip, we were talking about it. A couple guys donated soccer balls. They kind of saw me getting engaged and reading all these crazy books about how to engage folks in other cultures. And uh, it went well. Third trip, I'm getting ready to go. We decide to outsource everything to India. Kind of come to find out a lot of Indian culture is very much like culture in Africa, very similarities. I learned to engage Africans. And as a byproduct, I've learned to engage my friends in India that I work with. 
So I become like this, uh, ironically, like nobody here wants to talk to me, but I've become very popular in India because I actually now to engage their culture. But uh, fast forward five years later, last year the company I work for gave me five extra weeks off to go to Africa and to do this type of work, and it's on my professional development plan. It has become part of who I am both corporately and here at the church. And it's just, um, what a blessing. So, uh, you know, hopefully my babbling my, about my experiences and things have maybe even just uh, gave you an idea of how you might engage the folks that you see on a regular basis. Thanks.